how do you manage this rush? Fewer days, more e-commerce, and elevated expectations of faster and faster delivery. So thank you, Frank, and thanks for having me again. Um, you know, it's been a lot of planning. Um, we knew it was going to be a short peak season for us. From an international perspective, we knew we were going to get a, a rush, specifically coming off Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And being a compressed peak season, it was all down to pure peak planning and some good planning around. Right. You had elevated volume for Cyber Monday and Black Friday, but you're also projecting almost a 50% 50, 50 increase on December 16th. Absolutely. Talk about how you manage that, especially when your things are coming from overseas. You can't just move a fulfillment center closer to people. You have to deal with all that. Oh, no, absolutely. So first of all, we started with resources. We put on 10% more couriers. We've added over 700 jobs just here alone in the United States for seasonal hires. Uh, we're putting on an additional 75 charters, come specifically coming out of Asia. So all of that went into the pre-planning, and we knew it was going to be a bit short. Um, and again, all prepared. So far, it's been good. We have to talk about trade. The president saying yesterday that a trade deal with China could wait until after the 2020 election. That's right. Can you give us an example of how a trade deal happening or not happening impacts your business and what it means for you? Well, I mean, as you know, DHL is pro-trade, and trade is good. Trade, I say this everywhere, and I say it in Washington all the time, trade equals jobs. Um, as an example, between 2016 and 2018, we added over 3,000 jobs as a result of trade. So, you know, we're looking forward to a USMCA deal. We're looking forward to a stabilized U.S.-China trade deal. So, uh, again, it's important for us, and it's important for our biggest trade lane, which is China-U.S. And as a matter of fact, we haven't seen a slowdown at all. China is continuing to grow. Over the next three days, one customer alone out of China is going to send over 50,000 B2C shipments into the United States that we're going to be delivering. Well, we've seen lower ISM numbers, but you're saying that e-commerce, B2C e-commerce is still strong. Absolutely. If you think back to when I started in this business 33 years ago, less than one out of every 10 stops was an e-commerce e delivery. Today, seven out of every 10 stops is an e-commerce delivery to a residence, and we're seeing growth. We're going to see a 35% growth in shipment per day from quarter three to now. And we're also seeing an interesting phenomenon as well that's happening. It seems to be at the end of every quarter, we're seeing a big push. So we saw it in March, we saw it in June, we saw it in September, and we're seeing it now in December. This facility alone that we're sitting in today has saw a 50% increase in stops just in the last couple of days alone. So, yeah, it's all happening. And now our uh, Morgan Brennan, I believe she has a question for you. Sure. I do. Thanks, Frank. Hi, Mike. Good to see you. I'm curious. DHL over the years has made these investments and made these pushes to really crack into the U.S. market in a meaningful way in terms of package delivery. The most recent example of that uh, announced a little less than two years ago. How are these efforts going and are you actually meaningfully taking market share from FedEx, UPS and the Postal Service? Well, I would say that uh, the investments continue. We just recently announced uh, late last year uh, the purchase of 14 new 777 Boeing aircraft, an investment of over 4 billion euros. And that was all done for two reasons. One was to enhance our capacity coming out of Asia and Europe into the United States, one. And two was also part of our sustainability commitment long term and our goal to be a net zero uh, company uh, by 2050. So, yeah, we see the investments continuing. And then equally with that, with the increased jobs and the stabilized trade platform that hopefully we'll have here sometime going into 2020, that equals jobs. And as I was just saying to Frank, we've added over 3,000 jobs in the last 24 months and over 700 jobs just in the last, uh, call it the last 45 days. So, Mike, speaking of your competitors, here in the U.S., Amazon's expected to more than double the amount it delivers itself this year. Absolutely. You guys have a relationship with Amazon. Are they a rising competitor for you in this international delivery market? No, I would say for us from an international perspective, uh, they're not. Uh, they're actually a friend. I get asked all the time. I believe last year Morgan and the team asked me the same question. Are they a friend or a foe? They're an absolute friend. Our relationship continues to grow with them. We don't see them as a threat to us based on the fact that we've got a strong global relationship with them. We don't play domestically in the United States. Again, it's the world into the U.S., the U.S. out to the world, and we continue to grow. And as an example, just two days ago, we got the single biggest ever shipping day of international shipments from Amazon, 67,000 international shipments in one day alone that they tendered to us.